Okay, real quickly, just from uh, some comments early on, I want to make sure we're on the same page with, with some terminology and some, some notations that I might be using to give you guys feedback or you might see in some of my lectures. And so um, from some conversations with some folks the last uh, couple days, I think maybe some of these are um, new to at least some of you. So I want to make sure we're all being fair and, and everybody knows this. Okay, so the first is uh, don't ever do this kind of stuff where point one. Right? Don't do that. I know there's some stupid stats programs that seem to give output like that. Don't ever do that. You always start with a zero and then a decimal and then whatever the, the value is. Um, in terms of uh, some common terms um, that I might put on some of the feedback to you guys when you're doing some write-ups and stuff, I might do R-O or R-O. That stands for run on sentence. That means your sentence was like blah, 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 blah. Your sentence was going on too long, right? Um, the three dots is therefore, so you might see that sometimes in my lectures, or I might be saying something, give you some feedback, and then do three dots, and then say something. So I, I give you some evidence, and therefore, like, you didn't do this right, right? So, so that's, what, that's what the therefore means. Uh, this sort of almost a figure eight, but not quite a figure eight on its side is proportional to. So you might see that sometimes in the stuff we're reading or the stuff that I show. Um, and then a squiggly equal sign is approximately. Approximate. I said approximately restoration. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, so that's approximately. This thing should have been another line. Um, I, a lot of times I'll abbreviate restoration and other things too by just dropping off the, the Asian and the stuff later. So R-E-S-T apostrophe N is restoration. Uh, or, and, and similar type, type words. If you see that, that's what I'm, it, I'm not, it's not rest and it's restoration. Okay. Other things, uh, that symbol up there, sort of like a double line with a P, either right or left, is, is uh, the symbol for a paragraph. I just mentioned run on sentences. Therefore, approximately, da da da. Um, uh, th difference, a triangle, the delta, the symbol for delta, which is like a triangle. Technically, there's a, there's a, fatter, there's a fatter line on this right side of the triangle. Um, but that means change, different, difference. That, that, that's how. Um, I'll use that in the semester. And then if an arrow, sometimes for just saving space on slides, I'll just use an arrow pointing down or arrow pointing up for meaning sh shrink or get smaller or grow or get bigger or bigger than. Um, H naught, we already just talked about earlier today, but, but H naught is, is the null hypothesis. Italicized P is the probability of something happening just due to chance. We use, a lot of times people call this a so-called P value. And then just like I said, restoration, population, right? So I'll abbreviate those a lot of times by just taking out some of the words and putting an apostrophe just solely to save space on my slides. But that's also a trick you guys can use when you're typing out notes or writing out your notes. Um, as far as the statistics stuff we've been talking about, N is a sh usually a shorthand for the sample size. But you can also use the pound sign. That's actually a pound sign. I know we all like to call it hashtag. But, but pound sign is, is the most useful uh, thing for numbers for us. Uh, X with a bar over it is the is uh, one one representation of mean or average arithmetic average, and then SD standard deviation or STDEV standard deviation, and then SE uh, for standard error is a pretty common um, representation. And then some nomenclature. So uh, so we're all on the same page here. We're all science folks. Um, data is plural. So our class data we pulled together, right? This thing I measured, I measured, I, I, I collected a datum on this can, right? So mostly we use data, but, but do understand that is plural. It's not singular. Whenever you say the term significant in this class, in any, basically any professional context, technical context, People are going to assume you mean statistically significant, right? That gets to the P, P equals 0.05 kind of stuff, right? So the general public uses significant to mean all kinds of things. You should not. Do not get into that habit. Only use significant for when you've actually done a hypothesis test and, and you've, you've actually seen whether something is indeed significant or non-significant. And then, perhaps the most important one for this class, oh my god, nobody screw this up. It is species. 
There's no such thing as a specie. I will throw something violently at your head if you guys say specie. You're not allowed to leave this class with that horrible, horrible habit. So people sometimes think species is singular. And so therefore, if I'm talking about one, I'm going to call it specie. That is wrong. Species is one of these crazy words where it's both singular and plural. Confusing, but that's the world we're in. In my notes or in a, a, a class lecture or handout, you may see me abbreviate species with SP. And to help with clarity in that case, we, I will always pay attention to whether it's singular or plural. And this is common amongst most ecology type folks. So if it's species, singular species, it's SP period for an abbreviation. If there are more than one species in question, it would be SPP period, indicating plural species. Uh, uh, when we get to other things, there are singular and plural uh, uh, ways of communicating that idea. So genus is singular, genera is plural. Okay, so now this is super important. So the, the typical conversational shorthand for an organism in ecology, so everybody pay attention, especially all you bio majors that have been contaminated by all these molecular biology people we have here. Organismal people, people who study things out in nature, we typically use the generic level, use the genus to describe something. So if we're talking about a, a species that we're working on, we usually say, if we're not going to say the full species name, if we're just going to abbreviate it, we'll abbreviate it with just the genus. So with mountain lions, we would say puma, right? Not the way the molecular microbial people do it, which is super weird. <laughs> they take the genus, shorten the genus to one letter, put a period behind it, and then put the species name. So the classic would be E. coli. That's become so common, even people in the general public think it's called E. coli. I think that's like a full name, E. coli, right? Right, exactly. So, technically speaking, neither is wrong. You know, it's not, it's not technically wrong, but that's not how ecologist, organismal biologist, organismal biologist, I've never seen one use this, pecan color, right? They'll say puma. So I'm going to ask you guys to use that, to follow that convention, um, uh, since that's, what, that's the kind of stuff we're working on in this class. When you go to write up that, that, um, that, you know, that, that, that lab write-up or whatever, and you write the Latin name for things, you italicize the name. Why? Because it's Latin. It's not English. Things that aren't in English, we italicize until it becomes so ubiquitous that it becomes an English language word. Then we don't italicize it anymore. But so, so therefore, because we use Latin names, a language that is not changing anymore, that's so-called quote unquote dead. So it, it, it is, it's not having new, new conventions come into it, um, which is why we use that for our, our scientific notation. Um, uh, you type it in, go back, highlight it, hit Command I or, or whatever your Control I, whatever your option is, and make it italicized. Now, here's where it gets tricky. Common names. Every look at me. Don't screw this up. Don't screw this up. Common names, by definition, are not capitalized. Common names, by default are not capitalized, except for a few examples. Do I have more examples here? Yeah, OK. OK, except for, a, a, so, so how we actually represent names and, 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 and how, why something is called puma concolor, used to be called felis concolor, the genus changed. Each professional technical group of scientists that is responsible for that particular group of organisms has a professional society. Mammologists, botanists, birders, 
herpetologists, they all have their, their, their international groups. And in those international groups, they have a, a governing body of nerdy people like me, professor types and, and agency types, um, that all they do is sit around and they review, I don't say all they do, but, but, but the task of that group is to be the judge. So they are the Supreme Court when it comes to naming things. And so they decide on the name of Felis Concolor or Puma Concolor, okay? But they also establish the tradition for referencing the common names and how we will do the common names. So almost everybody says the common names, unless it's a proper noun, the common names are not capitalized, except the weird ass birders, because birders are weird. Mm -hmm. And they always got everything different than everybody else. And so they say, for bird names, if you're typing out the common name of a bird name, all of the common, you know, the start of the word of each common name is capitalized. This is what I mean by that. So here we know. Here's some, I just made up some random sentences just to show you examples. So here we go. So the Kelvin team had been working hard to ensure viable mountain lion populations persist throughout the, the Santa Monica Mountains. When you guys are doing a write-up or your poster, which we'll talk about next, right? you know, a formal write-up, a formal thing, or you're writing up a test, you know, we're, we're doing a, a, an answer on a, a you know, test question or something. Um, uh, using the Latin name is never wrong. That's our master word, right? That, that's the default, right? But it's okay to use the common name if you like. However, if you, if you use the common name, you also need to at least use the Latin name. So typically, we say mountain lion. If we're talking about this and we're having a class lecture or you're doing a paper on it or something, you're like mountain lion, mountain lion, mountain lion, mountain lion, right? Which is cool. The very first time though you say it, the, you introduce it, mountain lion parentheses the Latin name, which is the genus and the species. If, it was, if there was a variety, a subspecies, you'd also say you know, genus, species, and subspecies, right? Close parentheses. So here we go. The genus is always capitalized. So capital P in the Latin name. The species name is not capitalized. Cool? But now let's look at the common name. So here, because this is a generic common name, and I said the generic is not capitalized, it's lowercase m, lowercase l. Cool? Now here's another one about the birds, because we know the birders are weird. So here we go. We found, a, we found barn owl diets to be typically dominated by small rodents. So barn owl, the, the birding people, they say capital B, capital O. And then we have the genus and species. Okay, the one exception is if something is a proper name, so if it's named after a city or, you know, or something like that, right? A geographic location, a specific geographic location. That a proper noun that would be capitalized in regular English would also be capitalized in, what the hell is that going by the window? Uh, uh, sorry, distracted. Uh, 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 I lost my train of thought. Oh, okay. So, so California tiger salamander. The tiger salamander part is Joe Blow word, so regular word, right? Not proper name. But California is a proper noun. So in that case, the, the genus is capitalized, capital A. Species name, lowercase c. But the common name, c, in California is capitalized, and then the T and tiger and S and salamander lowercased. Does that make sense? So species, singular and plural. If you want to use the common name, you are more than welcome to. Absolutely no problem with that. But the very first time, make sure you always introduce the Latin name. The first time the species is ever discussed in a write-up, an assessment, whatever, needs to have the Latin name. Because remember, common names so in the case of mountain lion, there's mountain lion, catamount, puma, um, uh, 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 I can't think of the other names off the top of my head, but, but there's like a zillion different common names for them, depending on where we are, right? So mountain lion is what we tend to use in California, but they could be, oh, panther is another one they use in Florida, they use panther. Um, so, so it's fine to use a common name, but we always have to use the Latin name, because everywhere we are, whether we're in Florida or Texas or New Mexico or California or Colorado, the, the Puma Conclure is a solid, is a solid term and a consistent term. Make sense? Questions about that?